Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to take a look at the final Tides of War Overture Unlock. This is the AG M42. This is a semi automatic rifle for the assault class. I would say it's most similar in performance to the M1A1. Smaller magazine, higher damage, potentially more accurate and better at long range. And if you've progressed your way through the Tides of War chapter rank, then you've unlocked this cool white tiger skin for the weapon, which I gotta say actually really does improve its visual look. It's also the only other rifle in the game at the moment that offers a two times optic that we previously saw on the Recon Subsolator 1906. When it comes to weapon specialization, I've picked the left side tree here, faster aiming down sight. Then we get a detachable magazine. The normal reload is very long if you don't have this. And then we have less vertical recoil and finally the ability to move faster while aiming down sight. The right side progression tree is geared a little bit more towards somebody who wants to remain in the backfield, maybe take out snipers at further ranges or just pinpoint headshot people as far away as possible and get that precision to a max. I picked the left side because it gives me a few more options in terms of aggressive play. And when I play assault, I generally like to be more aggressive. The weapon appears to have a maximum damage of 31 with a 450 round per minute uh, rate of fire, which makes it very, very similar to the M1A1. I think the M1A1 has slightly less damage per shot, but it's still a four shot kill in close quarters and it has the exact same rate of fire. The M1A1, however, has a larger magazine capacity at 16, where this one uh, starts off with 10. And if you get the detachable mags, you can have 11. If you were to compare this with, say, the Turner SMLE, the Turner is actually a three shot kill in close quarters, but it only has a rate of fire of 360, 90 rounds per minute slower. So this one's a bit more spammy, uh, but slightly less damage per shot. You do, however, have pinpoint accuracy when shooting this weapon, even with the recoil dampening later, it gets even more accurate and you can just absolutely pop heads at any range. Uh, I feel like headshotting with this weapon and the M1A1 is very important to making those guns successful because their uh, ability is extreme accuracy in medium range combat. Longer ranges, they get a little bit trickier, especially with the left side progression tree here. You are gonna be missing a few shots that you might feel like you should have hit. There's gonna be a little bit of bullet deviation at those further ranges, especially if you're moving around and side strafing. So uh, just be aware of that. It's not that effective of a weapon at extreme ranges unless your target is stationary and you can just land some back-to-back -back headshots. Now, with the accuracy requirements in mind, I generally like to run this with a three times scope. I tried the iron sights. They look cool. They're very unique, but not particularly effective in my opinion. Uh, then I tried the two times scope, which again, looks cool and unique, but it has a lot of metal housing on left and right, and just not enough magnification for me personally. The three times scope really seems to be where it's at for a lot of the semi-auto rifles. In fact, it's my scope of choice for pretty much every single one of the semi-auto rifles. It just seems to resonate with me personally. You might prefer something else. And if you do, this weapon gives you a lot of options. Now, once I began to get a feel for this weapon, there came a point where I had to ask the question, why would I use this over the M1A1? Both are very similar weapons. Four shot kill weapons, same exact rate of fire, very similar play style. I like to use both of those with three times optics. They need headshots to down enemy players quick enough. Why would I use this over that one, especially when the M1A1 comes with a larger magazine? Okay, well, for argument's sake, the AGM-42 does slightly more damage per shot, which means it gives you a little bit more leeway, I guess. Maybe uh, if you hit somebody in the leg a few more times with the M1A1, you might be required one extra shot to down them, something along those lines. Or if they have a little bit of damage done to them, this uh, weapon's gonna give you a slightly higher chance of getting a three shot kill over the M1A1's four shot kill. I believe it also extends its damage range a bit further than the M1A1. So uh, in terms of versatility, this might give it to you at the sacrifice of ammo capacity. Now, having an 11 round magazine is probably the biggest Achilles heel of this weapon. It's a cool gun, it's fun to use. I like it in a lot of situations, but I find myself being slowed down a lot and missing kills 
because I just don't have the ammo to deal with that last enemy that I see, and I gotta go and reload the weapon. It also burns through the ammo pretty darn quickly, so it really helps to have a support class nearby, or definitely uh, getting close enough to your enemies to pick up their ammo helps, although again, with this weapon being designed primarily for medium range combat, you might not have quite as many opportunities for that. So those would be the reasons that you could use it over the M1A1. I still think it's going to be pretty hard pressed to say, hey, this gun's better than the M1A1 just because that weapon um, is so darn accurate and so aggressive. It, it's just basically a slight shift on the scale. Do you want super, super aggressive semi-auto? Then you go with M1A1. If you want something a little bit more versatile for range, then this one is going to give it to you. The recoil, though, is so easy to manage, very similar to the M1A1. You can just level off the weapon at headshot level and just fire away and down somebody very quickly. Now, because this weapon is generally a four-shot kill, depending on the range that you engage your opponent, the further away, the more shots you're going to need to kill them, uh, and you only have a 11-round magazine, provided that you go with the left side tree, it does make it really hard to get two kills per magazine. You really have to mix those headshots in there to try and reduce the shots to kill requirement. But even so, at medium range, most of the time you're going to be reloading in between each kill. You just won't have enough ammo to deal with two opponents. So... And make sure you you factor that into your play style. And that's one of the, again, one of the really attractive aspects of the M1A1 is you can down two, even three people per magazine if you got the accuracy to back it up. Now, at the very end of the progression tree, you have to choose between whether or not you want the ability to side straight faster while aiming down sights, or you want 10% faster muzzle velocity to hit those moving targets at range. And that one is always one that I've struggled with. I almost always lean towards the faster moving while ADS because side strafing while you aim is so darn important to avoid getting one-shotted by sniper rifles, which is going to be one of your main threats with this class because you're going to be trying to engage at medium range what kills really well at medium to long range bolt-action rifles. So you don't want to sit still for those guys. So improving your side strafing is helpful, but it also means that those medium to medium long range targets get really difficult to kill because you have to lead perfectly. The animations in Battlefield 5 aren't perfectly great. So if somebody's side strafing or zigzagging a lot, it can be a very difficult task to try and down that target. A stationary target, no problem. This weapon will destroy them very fast. But a moving target with unpredictable movement, all of a sudden that becomes a major problem for you at medium range. Now, to an extent, I already know how the community is going to react to this weapon being added to the Assault class. The Assault just got two new weapons for the holiday, and the Assault has been one of the most powerful classes in the game with a huge amount of weapon versatility. Not to mention the AGM-42 doesn't really offer that much new diversity to the class since this weapon is so similar to the M1A1. It's just slightly different, slightly different preferences uh, on your playstyle, but for the most part, it's something that you could intermix with the M1A1 without too much difficulty. And I know a lot of people are wishing that the medic got a new weapon, and this would have been a cool weapon for the medic class. It would have fit the medic really well as the M1A1 would have. Uh, DICE has already confirmed that the medic is getting something this holiday season, or at some point in the near future. We just don't know what it is. Um, and so I would say keep your eyes peeled for that since they've already kind of guaranteed that that's coming. But uh, the Assault didn't really need a new weapon compared to the other classes. So as cool as this gun is, and I do like it, it's fun to play around with uh, by all means. If you enjoy the M1A1, you'll probably enjoy this weapon. Uh, it's something that the Assault didn't necessarily need, nor does it make the class that much more interesting again, because of its incredible similarities. Now, I definitely recommend unlocking this weapon and the other weapons in the Tides of War campaign if you can. Uh, the assignments for doing so are not particularly difficult. I did the Team Deathmatch one and uh, was able to get this weapon without too much trouble. Some of the assignments require you to win a grand operation. I recommend kind of cheesing that one a little bit and joining a grand operation that's on the last uh, map or the day three and just trying to get on a team that's winning. That was the quickest way for me to do it so that you don't have to go through all three days and then end up losing on the third day, which would really suck. So that would be my one recommendation for 
for getting through some of those assignments a little bit quicker. Ultimately, if you do miss this Tides of War unlock, you should be able to purchase it later. I think the VGO was like 1,700 company coin, which isn't too much, uh, especially compared to some of the cosmetic items. That's a pretty easy unlock to get, so you can always get it down the road. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about the AGM42 in the comments below if you've unlocked it. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing out.